Hi, today's painting subject is cherry blossoms, one of the most iconic plant for spring. So there are many methods to paint cherry blossom trees and uh, flowers. I'm sure you have seen tons of tutorials shared by many artists. So I am going to be using white gouache as a medium to paint the cherry blossom trees. So a quick fact, there are so many varieties of cherry blossoms and the ones in the Europe, I believe, are from the Prunus genus. Now, this footage was taken at a very famous spot in uh, Luxembourg, which is Wallenstein, in the wine yard region called Remick. So, this is how the uh, cherry blossom alley looks like. So, here's the aerial view of the alley taken by a professional photographer. So I have left some links in the description in case you are interested about this place. So I have roughly made a pre-sketch of how I want the alley to be on uh, A5 sized uh, watercolor paper. So this is not going to be a very detailed painting of the uh, cherry blossoms. It is just in a form of alley and tree seen from afar as well as a close-up tree and to kick start i'm going to paint the sky and the colors that i'm going to use for the sky is cobalt blue and turquoise and after mixing these two shades this is the color mix that i'm going to use so i'm painting right away using that blue mix and i have not pre-wet the paper so basically this is wet on dry surface reason being we want to focus more on the cherry blossom trees or alley painting and not the sky or any cloud effect so next i am painting in an impression of hills at the background uh, with some olive green and i've also mixed in some sophia into that olive green to give it a very dull uh, green look next i am using a damp brush to wash off the edges of the hill as well as uh, pre-wetting the area where I'm going to start painting the uh, cherry blossom alley followed by a nice mix of white gouache you don't want it to be too wet as you can see the consistency on this uh, video and drop in with a clean brush onto that pre-wet surface as you can see since it was a pre-wet surface, you can see the uh, blooms of the white gouache as soon as I place it uh, onto the paper. Once done with the white gouache, I am going to drop in some bits of uh, pink mixture. You can use any pink of your choice. I am using the Opera uh, pink which is like a neon uh, colored pink. So you can use magenta or you can even drop in some carmine or crimson, the light red uh, pigment. Notice as you drop in those uh, pink pigments, since it was another medium that you dropped in, which is the white gouache, they bloom into each other. Next, you will have to use a clean damp brush to move those pink pigment into the uh, white gouache. As you can see I'm doing here, just push in those pigments or try to blend in so that you get a nice um, light washes of pink into that uh, white gouache. So just lightly spread those colors in as per your preferred look. The ultimate goal is to make it look like the cherry blossom tree seen from afar. So once done, we're going to leave that to dry and uh, move on to the other parts of the painting. So starting off by pre-wetting the right hand side of the sketch and I'm going to drop in some uh, olive green. You can use any green of your choice. So it's not anything particular, just to create an impression of some field. And uh, repeat the same process on the left hand side of the painting 
where we're going to paint the same green terrace or alley. And uh, while the green paint is still wet, I am dropping in some lemon yellow for some color variations and it adds more value to the look of the painting. Same process on the left hand side of the painting. And I've also decided to drop in some of those pink pigment that I had earlier. Although it doesn't matter because I am going to be painting those area with the close up trees. But you can drop it on the right hand side where it's much more visible. Next I'm going to paint the pathway or road of this uh, pink blossom alley. I'm going to use a light mixture of grey. You can use your paints grey or mix some burnt sienna to ultramarine blue or cobalt blue to get a very cool looking uh, grey similar to what I'm using right now. So since the road painting is still wet, I'm going to drop in the white gouache mixes once again, similar to how I did it on the trees uh, painted earlier. So drop in your white gouache while this area of the painting is still wet so that you can get some nice bloom effects as the white gouache bleeds onto the uh, wet surface. And if you notice some part of your painting that has dried just spray wet it with some clean damp brush and drop in those white gouache right away so upon completing those white gouache effects we're going to drop in the pink pigment similar to what we did earlier. Done dropping in those pink pigments. Clean your brush and make sure it's damp and start blending in those pink pigment into the white gouache. So lightly blend in those uh, pink pigment onto the white gouache to get some light washes, a soft look of a very light pink. You don't want the, some of those pink pigments to just be static or sit around in one part of the tree. Basically, it's like painting a regular tree without the green uh, color leaves. So if you don't prefer to use another paint medium as in watercolor or the gouache, you can also do this with just water, dropping in some pigment onto water. So the first method I'm going to show you here is by pre-wetting your paper with clean water so you can see the shimmer from the light and just drop in your preferred color choice so I've chosen to use a uh, carmine or crimson so as you drop in those pigment it bleeds in but not too much so you will still need a brush to blend in those uh, pigments that you have dropped earlier to move into the wet surface in the past, I have shared some shorts or short videos on my YouTube channel on tips to paint some trees. So you can check that out. I've left the link above. So once you're happy with the look of this painting, you can leave it to dry. Come back for finishing touches. Now the second way to do uh, the same painting is uh, wet on dry that means I don't pre-wet 
the paper surface I just drop in those wet pigments same carmine color just dropping in and now I'm going to use a wet brush or damp brush to move those pigment on the dry surface so this is there's going to be a little struggle with this method but for those who like uh, who prefer a more controlled way of painting you can opt to use this method so bottom line is you can choose to paint your cherry blossom trees using these two techniques however you would realize that the pigments do not bleed too much because there is no other paint medium so if you use another paint as in white watercolor mix or white gouache it will be much easier to achieve a very soft bloom look which is why i chose to show you in this tutorial by using the white gouache method and finally you can finish off this tree painting by painting in the uh, trunk and tree branches as you usually do so i hope you find these tips useful and try to experiment to see which painting method suits you so let's get back to the cherry blossom alley painting so at this moment i noticed that my background especially the hills painting have faded it's quite normal in uh, watercolor painting so I've at, I'm attempting to repaint the hills using the same green uh, olive green mix so this time I am just dropping in some Sophia as well basically it's a wet paint on a dry surface so just roughly paint the hills in and I am using a damp brush to soften the edges by giving it a light wash and uh, using the same olive green mix I have decided to add in some details onto the other parts of the uh, painting especially the green field or terrace so same approach wet onto dry surface I'm just making some impressions of grass i'm using a damp brush to give it a glaze or wash so that the colors blend in onto the first layer of painting now dropping in some more pigments while that area is wet i'm also dropping in some sophia to give it some color variations as i said the more colors the more natural your field or terrace would look next i am going to repaint those trees on the alley and once again in order to do this you will have to pre-wet that area with clean water so that when you drop in those gouache you will get the same nice bloom effect so just repeat the painting process and as you already know drop in those pink pigments as we did earlier now some of you might be wondering why repeat in process the thing is watercolors usually uh, dry and become more faded when you paint you don't see the effect but it is only after the painting has dried you will realize that it has faded that's the nature of the uh, watercolor pigment so in order to have a brighter painting you will have to repeat the painting process well you can't fix this issue by dropping in a lot of pigment during the first time of the painting meaning the first layer itself because the paper would become too drenched with water and paint and you risk tearing up your paper 
and next I am painting the ground level of the uh, cherry blossom tree alley using the same olive green and I can see the color bleeding in because that area is already wet when we were painting um, the white gouache so just drop in a little bit of your olive green and uh, try to have some control with the tip of the brush so done with the background trees now we're going to repaint the trees that are up close or nearer on the painting and repeat the same process as I said pre-wet the area and drop in the white gouache so while you paint this don't forget to enjoy the process because painting process is very therapeutic for most people and notice the trees in the background at this point of time they already look so puffy almost like a cotton candy last but not least second layer painting for the main tree the one that is on the foreground A close up of the blending process, color mixing process. Notice as you mix, you achieve a nice baby pink or cotton candy pink. You can use the tip of your brush to just um, apply some dots. It doesn't matter if the edges of the tree have dried that dots creates an extra effect done with the tree i am going to repaint the ground with the same olive green and i have pre-wet the paper before i dropped in the olive green So once the whole painting has dried, the finishing touches is going to be the tree bark or tree trunk and branches. And I'm going to use a mix of Sophia with a touch of black. You can just use Sophia alone, it's all up to you. And use a very um, thin tip brush. As you can see here, I'm using a rigger brush to paint the tree trunks especially for the trees in the background as for the close-up trees you can use a slightly bigger uh, tip brush You don't want to be too detailed about the tree trunk and branches just an impression as long as it looks like a tree Once again, you can use the rigor brush for the twigs as it will be much easier to draw those fine lines. Now 
Now, assuming that the sun rays are shining bright from the top of the sky, so I assume we will be uh, seeing some shadow underneath the trees. So I am using some light grey mix for the shadow effect. Just make some scribbles with some gaps in between for the tree um, which is the most closest or foreground. As long as it looks like an impression of shadow. And after that, use a damp brush to soften the shadow effect which means we don't want hard lines so just give them some light washes at the corners of the uh, grey paint that we did earlier adding on some fine details using the same grey mix I'm using the tip of the brush to draw in some lines to mimic the shadow or the dark areas of the terrace. And I'm also repainting the driveway or road, the same cool grey mix. Now some fine details for the cherry blossom uh, tree, especially the one which is closest to, closest on the painting. You can skip this if you are already happy with the look of the tree. But I thought of um, just painting in those extra details. And I'm using white gouache. With the tip of the brush, I'm just applying some dots or dabbing some dots of paint and uh, due to the washout effect from the earlier painting I need to differentiate the first tree and the second tree because they look all mixed up together or attached so in order to do this I have dabbed in more white gouache on on the top left corner of the first tree so that as I use a damp brush to drag in those white gouache, you can see a clear difference or separation between the first tree and the second tree behind. So before I end or complete this painting, one final touch. What is watercolor painting without splatters, right? So I'm using this fan brush to create some splatters. And I'm using a mix of carmine so that it can add some color variations and creating the splatter. By moving my finger back and forth on the brush tip. I'm sure a lot of you have tried this method in many of your paintings. So it creates a cool splatter effect and makes the painting pop up or become more lively. So clean up any unwanted uh, splatter or mess by uh, lifting up those pigment with a clean damp brush as well as a dry paper towel. Most platters using white gouache this time and you can experiment whichever color suitable to this painting. Who am I to stop you, right? So have fun. Create your own design with the splatter. And with this, we are done with the painting. So how do you like the look of this cherry blossom alley? 
And as for next week, I'll be sharing another tutorial on how to paint a close-up cherry blossom tree using watercolor as well as incorporating soft pastel. So don't forget to hit the bell icon. If you haven't subscribed, do subscribe and hope to see you again on this channel. Bye!